I started painting watercolour landscapes in the early 1980s, but the idea of doing landscapes became deflected after I did a picture of my dog splashing in the river, when I became obsessed with the problems of painting moving water, and in particular, waterfalls. I moved to Lancashire in 1984 and found myself within range of some of the best waterfalls in England. But it was not an easy time for me. There are two problems in painting water. One is that you can't paint white. I got round this in my picture of the dog in the river by using masking fluid. But this is not very satisfactory because you've got no control over the final effect and you have to put the masking fluid on before you put the rest of the paint. Eventually, after a lot of practice, I found that I could paint the negative shapes, i.e. the shapes of the darks, with the same spontaneity that I would have painted the whites if I'd had white paint available, but it took many years. The other problem with painting water is, of course, that it's moving, and it's very hard to see exactly what's going on. You can get round this by using photographs, but it took me many, many years to realise that it's very hard to get a photograph that is correctly exposed for both the rocks and the water. My paintings became larger after I saw a large turn of watercolour of the St Gotthard Pass in the Abbot Hall Gallery in Kendal. And people began to like them and even to buy them, but I didn't feel very satisfied with them. I was enormously impressed at this time by visiting High Force, the highest waterfall in England, and began to do a series of paintings of it. And these are two of the tonal studies. But although I worked very hard, I found that the pictures didn't convey anything at all of the feeling of the place. I continued to paint High Force when I moved to America for a year, when I studied at Maharishi International University at Fairfield in Iowa. And I did a large number of paintings at this time, but I destroyed most of them although I did learn a lot about the nature and meaning of art. But I still felt that the feeling of the place was eluding me when I got home. Sometimes something happens which gives you a kick, a necessary kick. And this happened to me after I'd had a series of rejections and I went up to my studio in an angry mood and decided I would paint a picture just for me. I mixed up a whole lot of dark colours in a saucer and threw them onto a previously wetted piece of paper. And then I just had a lot of fun playing about with it. And before I knew what had happened, an entirely new version of High Force had appeared. And this time, it expressed the feeling of the place. I don't have that painting any longer. This, I continue to paint, and I continue to do better paintings of it. And this is one of the later ones. I had begun to see that making the water both fluid and wet means making the rocks hard and solid and static. But that is only on the surface, the expressed level. On the molecular level, the differences are not so great, and on the subatomic quantum levels, hardly at all. Rocks, water, clouds and sky are ultimately nothing more than vibrations, fluctuations of energy. This painting expresses that. The rocks are hard and solid, and the water moves. But you can see the energy right through the whole thing. This is unity, what I believe art is about. I wanted one thing more from this waterfall, and that was to see it when it is in spate, with the water coming over the central rock. This is something that only happens about once every ten years, when there is a major flood. I was lucky enough to see this in the early 90s, and these are some of my later paintings. Poor quality light, rain and mist reduced the tonal contrasts. All that was left was sheer energy, magnificence, and, I have to add, more than a hint of terror. In the next video, I'll be talking about how I got more colour into my paintings by doing a series of a pool called Black Moss Pot.